what ERs, what emergency medicine really needs in this country to be effective um, is more space and more people. Rather than trying to limit the ability of the emergency department to see patients and try and push people into venues that don't exist, um, I think um, we just need to become more efficient. Um, we need to work on systems that will allow us to practice evidence-based medicine, be as efficient as we can, be as outcome-based as we can, except the fact that in the near term there's not going to be any vast expansion of a primary care system that's going to accommodate people that need help. And I vote for giving emergency departments all the support they can get, all the space they can get. Um, and then it's our responsibility to use that space wisely um, and to be able to take care of people effectively. Um, we're happy to dispense drugs in the middle of the night. Um, we're, we're happy to be full stop shopping because why would we want to take care of you if you have a broken ankle at three in the morning and then give you a prescription and say, now go find a pharmacy, you know, at three in the morning. You know, so what we have to do, I think, is face the reality of how people get sick and how they need the healthcare system and try and, and adapt to it a little better than we do. There was actually a national report card on the state of, the, of emergency medicine done by the American College of Emergency Physicians. And um, California got an overall B, which was the highest rate, rating given, but a C on access and a C plus on quality and patient safety. The only reason we averaged up to a B is because we have a decent approach to malpractice issues in the state of California. But in terms of access and what's available statewide, um, we don't rank very well. California ranks last in the nation for the number of emergency departments per million people, ranks 50th in the number of registered nurses per thousand people, and 46th in the nation in the number of staffed hospital beds per 1,000. Um, nearly 20% of people that live in California don't have um, health care insurance. Am, am I cheering you up sufficiently um, yet? This is important stuff. The Institute of Medicine recently released a report entitled Hospital-Based Emergency Care at the Breaking Point. Well, I don't think we need to see this break occur, um, and I think what we need to do are face together and work together on some common solutions. So here are um, what I believe um, the solutions we should have to make emergency medicine serve its purpose as best it can um, for all of you and, and for the providers who work so hard um, to take care of you. Um, we have to learn to manage access, outcomes, and costs for our most frequent users. That's something we have to get better at. Um, we have to stop looking at emergency department visits as a problem. Emergency department visits are only the tip of the iceberg of health care costs. Um, we need to understand why patients use emergency departments and then support the emergency departments to manage the patients more efficiently. Um, we have to do better at handling low acuity patients. We need to move them quicker through the system. Um, we have to have sufficient space, and as Bob showed you, uh, we can't wait to get that additional space to handle both inpatients waiting for beds and the acute patients that come to the emergency department. Um, the hospital and the inpatient doctors have a responsibility to be more efficient in rapidly clearing the beds and making space for patients that come in through the ER. We need to train more emergency physicians in the state of California. Um, emergency physicians tend to stay in the state and practice in the communities in which they train. Um, we have to provide legal protection statewide for all mandated on-call physicians so that no physician who's needed to come in, again, it's not a problem at Stanford, but if you're out in a rural community and, and you have a bad head injury and there's no neurosurgeon on call or you have a complicated delivery and there's no obstetrician on call, that may be because they're afraid of the malpractice issues associated with taking call. We need to, we need to get rid of that for all time. We need systematic programs for error reduction in the emergency department, and we're working on that. Um, we need to implement all sorts of team triage approaches so that we can essentially be taking care of patients from the moment they pass through the metal detector um, until the time um, that, they're, that they're discharged. Now, you may be wondering about the metal detector, but um, I, again, I'm 
I'm starting to get older. And I was the medical director for the 1984 Democratic National Convention um, in San Francisco, uh, Walter Mondale. Um, and we estimated that at any one time there were 3,800 handguns inside the Moscone Center. And the reason was, was because the metal detectors didn't work. Um, you got you to turn off that camera. The, um, the, the, the metal detectors didn't work. And I, I know that because there was a shortage of radios and I, had to come, and I had to come in with radios. So I was like the watch salesman. I had a coat full of radios and went through the thing and it, um, the light never beeped. Um, there were red, white, and blue lights um, at the convention, which is pretty patriotic, um, except those were the bomb indicators. And the red light uh, meant that a bomb threat had been called in. Um, the white light meant that uh, a bomb had been discovered, and a blue light meant that it was armed. Um, the, oh, I'm gonna, I better stop right here. So, the, um, so we, have a lot, we have a lot to do. Um, in the emergency department. We very much uh, appreciate your support. Um, it's, it's good for us to know that you care enough to come to an event like this to learn about the plans um, for emergency medicine and the status of emergency medicine. We're gonna take some questions now and um, if at any point anyone would like to visit uh, and tour the emergency department, walk through. If you'd like to call us, if you have ideas, um, Criticisms, we like to receive praise from time to time. Um, but um, if you have any comment at all that you'd like to make that you think would be helpful to us, um, we would appreciate hearing from you. So um, thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to answering your questions. So while we're, while we're uh, getting set up for questions here, uh, and we have a moment, um, I really feel that I must share with you an experience that I had recently that makes this program especially meaningful to me. So in January, I was sitting at my office one afternoon, and my office is actually on California Avenue, sort of near the intersection of Hanover, when I got one of those phone calls that we all uh, dread. And this phone call was from my husband, who's a teacher here in Palo Alto at Gunn High School, and he said, you know, I just really, I'm not feeling good, and I think I'm gonna go home and take a nap. And I sort of said, okay, that's kind of unusual, because you know, to leave school for teachers is a pretty significant thing, right? Teachers just really don't do that. So that was kind of my first um, concern. And later on, when I called a couple hours later just to check on him, he said, well, I'm feeling kind of dizzy, I feel a little bit off balance, but you know, I'm just gonna go to sleep. And since that's sort of normal for him when he's sick, it didn't immediately set off additional alarm bells for me. So I stayed at work. But by about four o'clock, um, he called me back on my cell phone and he said, you need to come and get me and take me to the emergency room. And at that point, you can imagine what my reaction was. And I was trying to figure out in that kind of real time way, do I, drive across town, we live in South Palo Alto. Do I drive to South Palo Alto and pick him up and take him back to the ER? Do I call 911? You know, what do I do? And so I'm not sure if I made the right decision or not, but I jumped in the car, I raced across town, um, I got him, I threw him in the car, I drew back to uh, the ED, and uh, so suddenly I was transformed from a person who works at the hospital to a family member of somebody needing emergency care. So we spent the next four hours um, at the emergency room that evening. And um, that night, uh, we were able to go home, but there was enough concern about the episode and some of the tests that led to follow-up treatment. And the follow-up treatment revealed that my husband had an undiagnosed, very serious heart problem that previously had not generated any symptoms. And so about nine weeks ago, he had triple bypass surgery. And I'm happy to say he is doing wonderfully well. He's back in the classroom teaching at Gunn High School with, with his kids where he loves to be. And I really feel that it was that initial trip to the emergency room that may well have led to what saved his life. So I 
really have to thank uh, the physicians here tonight for sharing with us in an educational way something that is so personal and important to all of us.